Okay, hello there. My name's Luke Jennings. I'm VP of Research for Push Security. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you all about phishing 2.0, uh, particularly detecting tools like Evil Jinx, Evil No VNC, Mirena, and Modelishka. Now, just so you can see what it looks like, uh, we're going to use Evil Jinx as, as an example. On the right, we have the attacker's uh, Evil Jinx session, an SSH session that's running and it's been enabled. Um, and what we've got is this domain, login.pushdemos.com, where we are proxy into Microsoft's own login servers. So as you can see, that looks like a Microsoft login. Um, and that's all set up ready to capture sessions. So on the left, effectively, we're emulating the victim. We're saying they've already clicked a phishing link, and here they are. So they go and enter their username. So I enter my test username here. I'm then prompted for a password. I enter my password. This will be validated correctly by Microsoft. So we've already captured that. Uh, we can see that on the right. And then I'll be prompted for my chosen MFA method, which in this case is a one-time password using Microsoft Authenticator. Uh, Evil Jinx has now con continued to proxy all this. I'm now logged in. And as a, as a user seeing that, I'm now logged into my legit Microsoft 365 session. I would see all the files and emails and other things I'd expect to see because it's, it is legitimate. Um, but from the attacker's perspective, they've stolen the session. I can list it here. I've got the password as well. The tokens have been captured. And if I want to now, I can just dump those tokens, import them into my own browser and hijack that session. So that's using Evil Jinx to bypass an MFA enabled Microsoft login. Um, we could do it with any site. I've just used Microsoft as an example here. So similarly to before, the attacker is on the right and the uh, victim effectively is on the left. We've already clicked a phishing link and you can see I'm on this uh, definitely not phishing.com domain um, and I'm looking at a, an Okta login page. And in this case, this is effectively the victim's real Okta login page, but it's just they're actually looking at an attacker's browser instead without realizing. On the right, we have the attacker. We've got their um, terminal session running evil no VNC, but because that's really just controlling a browser. We're gonna bring up the attacker's browser as well so we can see both instances here, the real one and the rendered VNC version on the left. And what this means is that everything that the victim does is, is mirrored because they are really just controlling the attacker's browser. So you can see as I enter my username there, the attacker sees everything that's going on and they can monitor this. And we've got the same process again where I log in with the username and password and then prompted for MFA. In this case, I'm using the Okta Verify app and I pick the, the uh, one-time password method and enter that. And then I'll be successfully logged in to Okta. Now, at this point, the victim on the left sees all the normal applications they expect to see in Okta because this is their legitimate Okta tenant. So it looks pretty legit at this point. If they haven't realized something was up by now, then they're probably convinced everything's fine at this point because they see what they expect to see. Now, from attacker's perspective, uh, I might say, okay, I've got what I want now. And this might not be the most stealthy way of doing it, but I could just cut the user off. So there I go, just disconnect them. It looks like the app stopped working to the user. And all I say now as the attacker is, right, thanks for logging me in. Uh, I'll take back my browser now, thank you very much. And then I'm in. So at this point, I can start looking at post-exploitation options. Um, for example, if they're using an Okta SWA, uh, one simple thing is I might just want to start grabbing some other passwords for other apps that are configured in there and using those and, and noting those down too. And they, may, they don't go through the SSO mechanism, so they might be a way for me to laterally move afterwards. Um, but uh, if I'm happy that this is all done, I could keep using that browser or I can eventually tear down the connection and look at what other data has been captured and is available. Um, so we obviously still capture the data we see going through it just like we did with uh, the other technique before. So we've still got the password as well. Uh, and of course we've got the cookies so we could use them to import into another browser later if we want to. Okay, so I'm gonna just show you a little bit quickly about what we're doing with Push, how we're trying to, to help in this space. Is how do we detect some of these tool sets in use? How do we generally make phishing become harder? Um, before we actually go to our controls page for the push tool, I'm just gonna talk conceptually, at least at a high level about how we do this type of thing. Broadly speaking, we're looking for any evidence of, of difference between uh, a legitimate site and behaviors that we would expect to see 
for attacking the more middle approaches or techniques or tool sets themselves. Um, I'm just going to use Evil No VNC as a good example again here because this does all sorts of things. This is just, say, the HTML page for a legitimate Opta instance. Uh, so we can see the DOM as it's been loaded. So being in a browser extension, we have the benefit of seeing everything. Like once it's loaded, we see how it changes in response to user events as well as all the network traffic and everything. So effectively, we can inspect uh, and trace activity uh, in a lot more detail than you would with something like a proxy. Um, but this is what the DOM looks like when it's been loaded. If we then look at a, an Evil No VNC example, um, although it may be visually similar, it is clearly different in terms of the HTML. Um, so like I've selected that canvas element, which Chrome has just highlighted. That's why the, uh, there are those squiggles on the left. Um, but you can see how it may visually appear similar to a user, but the, even just the HTML at this level is completely different, as well as many different things that are different in terms of uh, what happens in response to different user events. So look, there are lots of different approaches for different techniques and tool sets here, but we're looking for behavioral differences, and the browser extension is in a really good place to deal with that. So we'll move on to the actual um, tooling we use to detect it now. So this is our controls page, which hosts our ITDR features. Right now, we're going to look at the phishing tool detection. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to use warning mode, and, and we'll see what it looks like as an example here. So let's go to our user's browser. Let's say they've got uh, a phishing email. Um, and so they're like, OK, I'm clicking this, this link. Uh, they load that, and then you saw the, the initial page load occurred, but as soon as our browser extension has observed the full download and everything and determined that actually this looks like Evil No VNC, it's kicked in and given this warning. And as warm mode, they still have this button where they can proceed anyway, um, but otherwise this is a strong warning for the user. Now, that will then report an event back up to our system and that will be uh, reported to your SIM if you configured webhooks as well. So you can get those centralized alerts too. So that's what we're doing at the browser level for the phishing tool detection. Uh, we're going to move on to a demo where we detect and block attempted SSO credential reuse. So this addresses another part of the problem where uh, rather than detect tooling in, in use, we're going to try to stop SSO credentials being reused. So essentially we want to pin someone's password for their identity provider to that particular identity provider tenant and make sure they don't use it elsewhere, which is a very sort of generic and effective control. So in this case, what we're going to see is we've got this, you know, this potential phishing page and our, our user is about to log into it. Uh, now, if I just enter a password, like just, just literally the word password or any other password, it's fine. Uh, but what happens here is the browser has an, a K anonymized hash in place to know what the IDP password is, which you can check locally. Like we don't synchronize those things, but what happens is it can detect if that gets entered into a field. So in this case, when the user actually goes to try to enter that IDP password, our browser extension immediately kicks in. And before the form's even been submitted, it redirects the user here, indicates what's happened. It'll also then like we saw previously, fire up an event to our system too. And if you've configured webhooks for your SIM, that's where those events will go. So you'll get a notification as a security team too. So those sort of two controls combined um, provide you know, some pretty good protection against these uh, phishing attacks. Um, thank you for listening.